G'day, Russell here from Prime Motion Training. As you go through the Victoria Police application process, there are a number of tests that you need to contend with, and I'm sure you're well aware there are things like entrance exams, fitness testing, medical assessments that need to be done, a number of different interviews and so on, and all of these things will contribute to your final applicant score. But what you might not be aware of is that in the background there are quite a few other assessments that are occurring to determine whether or not you're a suitable applicant to join Victoria Police. So in this quick video I wanted to discuss that issue in a little bit more depth with you. Okay, so I think it's important that we start with the end in mind, and that is that when you come to the end of the application process, if you've successfully completed that process, you'll then be placed onto what's called the order of merit. And probably the best way to think of the order of merit is a bit like a ladder, where obviously this would represent the top of the ladder, and of course this is the bottom of the ladder. Now, given that the process is a scored application, um, it would make sense that it's referred to as an order of merit. Okay, of course merit being the best score or the highest score. And so applicants are placed on this waiting list hoping that they get a position but if they don't score very well naturally they'll be down at the bottom of this waiting list and if they score at an average rate compared to other applicants. They might end up in the majority of the center here where most applicants will finish up. Then of course if they've scored very well, they'll be placed at the top of the waiting list. And so importantly, we have this threshold where if we can score well enough compared to other applicants, and end up in this top section here, then we've got a very, very good chance of being selected. And it really just comes down to how long do you have to wait before you are selected. And that will depend on how many squads are going into the academy at that particular time. But once the people who are at the top of the list are selected and go off to the academy to start their training, that means that everybody else on the list can move up a couple of places. Now, the catch is that if someone else comes along and finishes their application process and they have scored higher than you, then of course they will go to the top of the list. If they've scored a similar score to what you've achieved, then they'll go somewhere here in the middle. And if they've scored lower than you, of course they'll go below you on the list somewhere near the bottom. So obviously it makes sense to try and get the best possible score because we need to be up here at the top of the list to have a realistic chance of being offered a position. And look, sometimes we refer to this, I guess affectionately, as the yo-yo list, because if we, if we zoom in a little bit closer to where this threshold exists, um, what happens is an applicant might end up in this position here, where they've been placed on the order of merit, and they're a little better than average. They're, they're quite high on the list here compared to other applicants below them and around them, but maybe not quite high enough to get into that top percentage of applicants that will get the positions. Now given that when people leave the list everyone else moves up, the catch is that whilst you're waiting, if applicants jump ahead of you, then of course what happens is you get pushed back down, um, you know, that number of positions down the list. And again, as people go off into the academy, um, you move, you know, back up again. And so you can end up going up and down, up and down, up and down, and never actually quite breaking that, that threshold here to get into the top percentage of applicants so that you will get offered a position. So really, really important as you go through the process that you understand that is an order of merit that we're trying to get onto. It's a waiting list based on score. And we, we need to be up in this top section to have any realistic chance of being offered a position. So let's continue on now. We'll take a look at what things will influence that final score that you end up with, which ultimately determines where you're going to be on the list, which of course in turn determines whether you've really got any realistic chance of getting in or not. Okay, so if this timeline was to represent the application process, um, here naturally we can assume that this is before actually starting the application. So before submitting any online form, any expressing any interest uh, to Victoria Police that you want to join the organisation. So this is before and this of course is at the end of the process and we'll call that the OOM or the Order of Merit. Okay, and that was that ladder that we we're just talking about over here. So back at the start, there are some things that you're probably well aware that you're going to need to do in order to get the application underway and complete it. Um, the first, of course, is that you'll need to do an online application. 
Okay, and so once you've submitted that online application, Victoria Police will conduct some fairly basic checks and when they're happy with those checks, they'll then invite you to do uh, the entrance exam. Now, the entrance exam is obviously something that you go off and, and do a test. Um, you've got to turn up in person, sit in front of a computer and do the entrance exam. Now, if you can pass that, you progress through the process. There are other stages that I'm sure you're aware of. There's a video interview. There's fitness testing, there's medical assessments, psychological assessments. Okay, well, a bit scribbly there as I'm trying to rush through it. I have a psychological interview, there's also a panel interview. Okay, so there's all of these, I guess, tests or assessments that you need to participate in in order to complete the application. But what you might not be aware of is that there's also in the background a whole series of assessments that are also occurring. Assessments that Victoria Police will make of you to determine whether you're suitable and competitive enough to proceed through the application process. And it's these other things that you've got to put the extra work into because ultimately, of course, we want to pass these tests and we want to get the best scores we can for each of those, but we've also got to show Victoria Police that we have all the skills and qualities and experiences and values to be suited to this role that you're applying for. So some of the things that will happen, I guess in the background that you've got to be aware of, is that they'll be conducting some character assessments. Okay, again, probably not surprising, but it's not as though you turn up for a character assessment test. I'm here to have my uh, character tested. Where do you want me to go? It doesn't work like that. They're conducting that uh, in the background. It's things like your life experience, Okay, what have you been doing um, in your adult life? What sort of experiences can you bring to the table? And also very important is your current work experience and current work situation. So if you haven't been working for some years, it might be more difficult for Victoria Police to see you in a professional working environment, being able to tolerate what happens in a professional working environment if you haven't been in that kind of environment for, for some time, sometimes people um, you know, might go off and have a family and then decide to rejoin the, the workforce and want to become police officers. If there's been a big gap between when they were last in a professional working environment and the time that they apply, that can actually cause some, some problems. Other aspects will be things like associations. You know, who is it that you associate with and what are those people like? What, what's their characters? Uh, what's all the, their character and their reputation? Um, another really big one is your online profile. Okay, and this is something that people overlook and it's really important that your online profile is a good representation of who you actually are, your values and your character. So obviously things like social media will give organizations like Victoria Police access to who it is that you really are because your your real online um, profile is probably a better representation of who you really are than what it is that you present in a job application. So your online profile is absolutely being assessed and it's something that you should be very mindful of. Another aspect that could be assessed in the background it relates to community. You know, what is your community involvement? How community minded are you? And is there any evidence in your background there, any evidence in your activities um, that could show that you're someone who is community minded, which is obviously a trait that you want to try and have if you're applying to an organization like Victoria Police that is very community focused and the whole purpose is there to serve the community. So if you can demonstrate that you're someone who's very community minded and you're actively engaged in community activities at various levels, and it could be a number of things, but that will certainly help um, enhance your, your application as well. Okay, so all of these things are going on during your assessment. They're uh, weighing up you against a lot of other applicants and they're ticking off all of these aspects in the background as well as, oops, I missed that, as well as of course 
uh, asking you to go through these main assessments where uh, it's very obvious that um, you know, you're being tested, you're being assessed. But just if you have a look below the line here, I'm just try, sort of trying to separate them for you. If you look below the line here, it's all of these things that are happening in the background that will have a significant impact on your score. Now, if you're doing well both above the line with the scores and assessments and tests and all those things that you do, and you're presenting well below the line, then you're going to find yourself in a position at the end where you're sitting up here at the top of that order of merit. And, and that is absolutely where we need to be. If we're not in that position, then the chances of us being selected uh, reduces significantly. I won't go into percentages, but you need to be at the top of the list. Okay, you've got to be competitive against the other applicants who may be applying at the time. All right, so when you're preparing yourself to go through the journey, cover all of these aspects as thoroughly as you can to give yourself the very best chance of presenting well as you move through your Victoria Police application process. And of course, if I can help you with any of these stages, I'm right here. You just need to reach out and contact me. Good luck with your Victoria Police application. I wish you all the best. Thank you.